Deepwater Horizon was a terrible set of 87 days. 11 people died almost immediately, dozens more were hurt. But what we did see was how a place can learn and how tragedy can transform how a place takes care of itself and is able to help others as well. On the evening of the 20th of April, 2010, I got a call from the Coast Guard Command Center advising me there'd been an explosion on a rig off the coast of Louisiana. The spill of record in this country was, of course, the Exxon Valdez when the Deepwater Horizon explosion occurred in 2010. We were actually going to war with the tools we had created in the previous 20 years to prevent a tanker accident. This is closer to Apollo 13 than it was the Exxon Valdez. It's the worst offshore oil spill in our country's history. No matter how much you put on scene in terms of fire boom, dispersants, the oil replenished itself every day. No one had ever known how to deal with a mile deep explosion like this. We had to bring together all of the expertise we could on how could we stop the spill without making it worse. The first thing we started doing was drilling relief wells. The relief well had to be drilled adjacent to the well that was there and then penetrate the well at the reservoir then actually put cement in there and recreate the rock that had enclosed the reservoir. It was an extraordinarily difficult process. Relief wells were going to take months. So while we started that right away, we kept thinking there has to be a quicker solution as well. We got very lucky by a on-the-fly decision to construct what's called a capping stack that was ready by early July. We put this capping stack on top of the out of control well at the bottom of the ocean, enough pressure had been relieved that that capping stack was likely to hold, and it did. In July, we capped the well. We did not finish the relief well until September, and that's when I declared there was no threat of discharge. Our investigative team found that mistakes and oversights led directly to the blowout, and they were the result of management failures. The charge of the Oil Spill Commission was what happened and why, and what can be done to make sure this doesn't happen again. The companies involved did not adequately assess risk at a systems level. This was why these technical things were allowed to happen. Whether it's a man-made or a natural disaster, the single most important thing is unity of effort. Having a single-minded purpose that everybody can use as a basis of trust to work together. These are exercises in applied civics. They're also tests of community resilience. The toll of the disaster on the community was really tremendous. Most everyone in there lives off of the environment, lives off of the water, shrimp, oysters, fishing, sportsmen. All of these things are linked to the coast and there's a dramatic impact. It's very difficult to answer what the exact environment impact was. There's a lot of things that linger in the environment that can last for many years and impact survival and reproduction and the health of the environment for a long time to come. And that is more difficult to assess. It's going to take a long time to really understand the long-term impacts. The wetlands in southern Louisiana and the barrier islands and the coast of Mississippi, in my view, are going to be feeling this for a long, long time. There are people's lives who ended and people's lives who are forever changed from this event. We have not just an opportunity, but a responsibility to really change how we react and respond and prepare for disasters and accidents. As a result of understanding why it happened, and why it took 87 days to actually seal that well. The industry has put hardware and operating practices in place so that if something like this happened again, it could be addressed in a much quicker fashion. We've made a lot of improvements in the last 10 years, but by no means have we solved every problem. We're in this together. Ultimately, you want communities to have a seat at the table, to get as many people in the community prepared so that these communities can recover as quickly as possible and leave some resiliency, some additional capacity in the community. We see this region has many challenges. The challenges will continue. The legacy of Deepwater Horizon will be to show how important science is in making decisions that help society meet these challenges and keep this region vital and safe and resilient for generations to come.